dozens of nations want to join the Five Nation Club. But to challenge the US-led global hierarchy, BRICS first needs to overcome internal fissures. They are giant economies, with even bigger populations and still greater ambitions. Starting Tuesday, leaders of the group of nations known as the BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa, are meeting for a three-day summit, which is expected to draw eyeballs from capitals around the world. Russian President Vladimir Putin will not attend the August 22-24 conclave in Johannesburg, South Africa, but will participate via a video conference to save the country the embarrassment of hosting a leader with an international criminal court ICC warrant against him related to Moscow's war in Ukraine. South Africa is a member of the ICC and, under international law, would have been obligated to arrest Putin if he were to visit. Yet, while the conflict in Ukraine and deepening geopolitical tensions between the United States and China serve as the backdrop for the summit, the BRICS meeting is likely to foreground the grouping's growing standing as a force challenging a long-dominant, Washington-led world order. The expansion of BRICS is expected to be high on the agenda. It is a club in demand. From Algeria to Argentina, at least 40 countries have shown interest in joining the grouping. Central to the grouping's attraction is its rising economic heft. The five BRICS nations now have a combined gross domestic product GDP larger than that of the G7 in purchasing power parity terms. In nominal terms, the BRICS countries are responsible for 26% of the global GDP. Despite this, they get only 15% of the voting power at the International Monetary Fund IMF. Coupled with grievances over such imbalances are growing concerns in the global south that the US could weaponize the dollar through sanctions the way it has against Russia. That has led to BRICS nations individually and collectively trying to reduce their dependence on the US currency while increasing bilateral trade in their own currencies. Agreeing that something needs to change is one thing, but agreeing on how to work together is another. India and China have been locked in a tense border standoff since May 2020. Meanwhile, India, South Africa and Brazil want warm relations with the West as much as they do with China and Russia. So, will the BRICS emerge as an alternative economic and geopolitical pillar to the US and its allies? Or could their internal differences limit what the group can accomplish? The short answer, the cloud of BRICS nations is likely to grow but the bloc is much more likely to offer piecemeal economic and diplomatic alternatives to the US-led global order than to dramatically replace it, analysts say. That could still lead to more tensions with the West as the grouping's leaders seek to chart out an independent path in a world in flux. But to remain effective, the BRICS will need to manage the disparate priorities of its member nations, a challenge that will not be easy for the grouping to address. Voice of the Global South In opening remarks at the BRICS foreign ministers meeting in South Africa on June 1, Indian Foreign Minister Subramanyam J. Shankar described the current concentration of economic power as one that leaves too many nations at the mercy of too few. It is a sentiment that resonates across the developing world, where the United Nations Security Council's veto-holding power remains limited to five nations based on an understanding rooted in 1945, at the end of World War II. In recent years, cracks in that US-led model have deepened. China, a dominant force in global economics as well as a military powerhouse, is testing the limits of Washington's influence. Iran's Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdallahian visited Riyadh last week and met Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman in the latest step towards a path-breaking normalization of ties between the traditional Middle Eastern rivals, brokered by China. Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in 2022 and the subsequent strengthening of relations between Moscow and Beijing, in the face of Western condemnation, have further accelerated the split. India, Brazil and South Africa have carefully walked a tight rope, refusing to join Western sanctions or other actions against Russia, while also distancing themselves from Moscow's justifications for the war. With the West's footprint receding in part after part of the world, the latest instance being Niger and the Sahel, there is a growing chorus among Africa, Latin America and emerging Asian powers like India to upend the post-Cold War unipolar system. Russia and China have pitched themselves as champions of this move away from a US-led order, whose rules, in the eyes of the global south, Washington itself frequently flouts. In July, Putin was on a full-charm offensive at a summit in St. Petersburg with African leaders and officials, quoting Nelson Mandela and name-checking anti-colonial heroes such as Gamal Abdel Nasser and Patrice Lumumba. I think it's time to rectify the historic wrong against the African continent, he was quoted as saying when discussing a proposal to reform the UN Security Council and include African nations as permanent members. India, 
too, has actively pushed for the African Union to get a seat at the G20 summit, which New Delhi will host next month. There is certainly a space for carving out a new world order, said Vivek Mishra, a fellow at the Observer Research Foundation or think tank in New Delhi. That space, he said, had been created by a convergence of two factors, the global south finding its voice and looking for nations that can champion its interests and Russia and China finding themselves at odds in an unprecedented way with the West. However, Mishra said it was important to understand that these two factors do not fully overlap, even if they serve the same interests at this moment. India does not view China as a voice of the global south, for instance, he said. Instead, New Delhi views China as behaving like a developed country trying to impinge on the narrative of the global south. Separately, Russia's war in Ukraine and the resulting disruption in energy and food supplies have also contributed to skyrocketing inflation across the developing world, mostly hurting the very nations Moscow claims to speak for. Yet the West's response to Russia's war in Ukraine, practically severing Russia from the global financial system through tough sanctions, has also spooked emerging economies worried about the US potentially wielding that power over all of them too.